All right, I'm back home and uh, I had a chance to finish sub book one. So got through chapter six. And all I can say is, what the heck is going on? I mean, I know what's going on. I'm watching things happen, but uh, everyone is just getting this white face. Uh, like, Haborik is noticing something crazy is about to happen. Uh, last scene of Subbook 6, Ikarian basically gets tackled by this uh, divers thing that the Nameless Ones got rid of that everyone's terrified of. It has that hunter. Uh, or I think it's, that's, uh, who it is. Man, I just don't understand. Uh, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of moving parts in this, but I'm glad that it all seems to be converging in this center. And this is going to be bad. I don't know. Uh, I think a lot of people will probably die in this next section, or at least in this book. Seems not good with this new... Man, it seems like this is where the new empire sort of really starts. If, you know, the next opening or whatever. The reversal of the seventh closure. If I'm understanding that right. Do you know what's so cool about this series? Is we've all read books where we have people on both sides and you have the general good side and then the general bad side. And on the good side, sometimes there's someone who's actually bad. Then on the bad side, you have some people that are good. And then they, then they join the good side. But I am six books into this series. And it's tricky to find out, really, what the good side is. It's like there isn't necessarily a good side. But there are good things that people do and bad things that people do. And it's tricky to find out really what kind of, uh, what to root for. The only thing I know for sure is I want the crippled God to be defeated or, or you know, or whatever. Uh, but as far as what these elder gods, what their real motivations are, uh, the, you know, Lacine and the Malazans, uh, you know, I root for Quick Ben and I root for Perrin and da da da. Uh, what, uh, this whirlwind, you know, the apocalypse still going, not the whirlwind, but the apocalypse kind of wanting to be reunited through Leoman and da 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 da. It's tricky because in all of these different factions, I like all of these factions. I love the Edur and I don't think I'm supposed to. I mean, I don't think, and that's the thing. I don't think you're supposed to put these big general umbrella things over almost any of these factions other than we hope that uh, whoever is leading these people don't go crazy. And isn't that the truth? Um, because it's not like uh, in a lot of these series and a lot of fiction where you have the, the bad side and the good side. But if you look back in human history, we have all these different kingdoms and things. And as soon as you get, uh, you know, sometimes it's good to have a king. And uh, because if you, have a, if you have a noble king and he actually is doing the right decisions on behalf of your kingdom, then that's a great thing and people love them. But the problem is, is when you have a bad king or a bad emperor or a bad dictator, bad leader, uh, someone with too much control, man, they can make things terrible. So it's, it's interesting to see how, uh, you know, if, if Troll was the leader of the Edur, it would probably diff be different than if Rulad. And now uh, we have in this last chapter... Uh, uh, it talked about that time where, uh, Troll, uh, inseminated the, the aerosol or, or whatever. It talks about how really she is the last kind of innocent one and Troll, I feel like, is the best of all of these people. 
in my opinion, he's the best. He's the most uh, noble or whatever, other than, you know, like Ekovian and stuff. But sounds like this child of trolls might be the one who really needs to be on the throne. Which, uh, I, I, hope, I hope that happens, kind of. I don't know. Maybe not, because maybe he's not going to be like Troll. Troll's the one that I want. It's just so much going on. We have Mappo and them. They are going into this sky keep. We have Callum dangling from this sky keep uh, and has all that stuff. Uh, Ganos is back. I almost stood up and cheered. Well, not really. That would be like being an insane person, but uh, I was so excited. I was so excited. I went to the Discord and, and was like, Canada's in the back. And he is seeming a little wiser, but he's also making sure to keep bringing in information and not always just, uh, you know, he's supposed to trust himself, sort of but he's still wanting to get the best information and stuff. Anyway, now I'm rambling. So awesome. So awesome. I have no idea what's going to happen in sub book two. So now I'm done the first six chapters. I think there's like five chapters or something. If I looked at the con table of contents, uh, or on the, on the, the, the wiki. I like to see how many chapters there are on the wiki, so I went and looked there. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Looking forward to this next sub book. I hope it doesn't take us somewhere totally different because everything is leading up to this. I, I feel like it can't have another sort of bundle of things going on like they've done in a lot of these other uh, books so far. I feel like it's got to keep following what this has just led to. And I'm just so excited. I'm excited to see maybe who shows up because there's this convergence with everything showing up. It sounds like there's all these Kachain, uh, you know, the, maybe the short tail ones that start with the N name. And it sounds like they're showing up, but who knows who else? Who knows if we're going to get a swarm of Segula or if the bridge burners are going to do some more cool stuff. Maybe they'll show up somehow again. I don't know. I don't know. I'm waiting for Fiddler and that group to have more to do. Uh, Temul is so awesome. I'm waiting for Temul to re-give or offer up that horse to do occur if he ever shows up again. I don't know. Anyway, looking forward to that. And if I get a chance, I will be doing chapter seven later on uh, this evening uh, when I get a moment. But there's, I have two recitals I have to go help out at later today. And that's like, you know, how am I going to go to a recital when I have all this stuff that I have to deal with? You know, there's moon spawns floating in with dinosaurs on them or, or whatever they really are. And Ikarium's fighting a, fighting a big demon-eating thing. Lady Envy and Spite might show up. I don't know. Where the heck is Tool? I got to hope Mappo doesn't let Ikarium go crazy and blow up, even though that's kind of what we want. I kind of want that. Anyway, this might turn crazy. I'm still wondering if some of these, uh, the closures, these kingdoms, there's the first empire. Uh, it, it seems like it's kind of like a cycle. I'm sure it is linear where these different ones pop up and then it closes and then pops up. Uh, but it seems like maybe there's some kind of cyclical thing going on. It wouldn't be the craziest thing in this crazy series 
if there was something where some of the stuff that they were doing maybe affects the, you know, it, it, it leaves like a fingerprint somehow in the stuff with the first empires, you know, some kind of cyclical thing. I'm waiting for that as well. Anyway, I'll talk to you on the next one.